Y'all got your drink fellas. That's my drink. It was like, ooh, Al lips look so good. I got good everything, Trust What else you got good, Al? <laughs> Take a look at that picture I sent you. Ooh. I just figured I'd get the girls a little preview <laughs> of the spring summer collection, aka okay. my body. It is TGIF. This is what y'all came for, right? Y'all came for this. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of TGIF. Everybody in the chat, we see you, and uh, thank you for keeping our show um, popping. And because of you, we got two nights, Wednesdays and Fridays. I'm going to keep reminding y'all. Okay, without further ado, let's get the show started. We are back. Let me introduce my amazing co-host. First, uh, let's bring on brand strategist, Al Reynolds. Hey, Al. What's up, Claudia? We need a little thing for you. <laughs> no, I don't have no hand motion, none of that. I'm going to leave that to cue. But I am but we, excited to be here this Friday, so let's get it. And, and how you answer the phone, too. You just answer the phone like, yeah, or oh, what? Know, it's, 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 <laughs> it's very anticlimactic. Okay. All right. Yes. Multimedia personality talk show host and comedian, Funky Dineva. See, get it, Funky. Hey, y'all, coming to y'all live from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. All right. So you're on another vacation, huh? Full of the good tequila, child. But I'm tired because y'all wore me out after last week. I didn't even want to go on this vacation. I actually missed my flight. I was supposed to be here Wednesday, and I was so tired. I just missed my flight and paid $3.46 to fly in Thursday. But I'm here. And you posted a picture online of your accommodations where you were saying, <laughs> I was a little concerned. It looked very sex trafficky. Like you got in late, so the other friend took the good room. Where he belongs. <laughs> you see all the beds. They got me down here where I'm, where I'm recording from right now in this basement. Y'all got to go to my Instagram. It's four twin beds down here. And it's actually a little table that daycare sized kids sit down and eat on or whatever, they stuck me straight in a dungeon. Mind you, it's a four-story house, and on every floor, everybody got full-size bed, big business desk, armoires, dressers, but this is what I get for being late, so I'm just gonna have to roll with it. So, hey, so how is that? Push the okay. beds together. You gotta push the beds together and like make that, make that twin a king, player. So I had a date that flew in town to meet me and we pushed the bed together earlier. So I knew know. it. I knew that, it. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Like how how's that working out? So you got some um in, you got a international traveler that that reached out and and and, and flew out to and see you across across the border. So right. one of the one of the three that's in the rotation trying to be number one. And he um he definitely bossed up this weekend and got my attention. It was a three, it was a three sentence text. I miss you. Where you at? Puerto Vallarta. Are you alone? No, but I got my own floor. I'm on my way. Next thing I knew, I had a confirmation from him flying in. So I welcomed it. So you being a little slut this weekend. Right. Is that why your throat is um, Scratchy. sore? Maybe. Maybe <laughs> not. <laughs> I never seen Q this like subdued. He must have got the. Me neither. He must have got wore out before the show. <laughs> I have been drinking since breakfast, but I am fine. It is nine o'clock here. We've been drinking since nine o'clock this morning, but I'm definitely but, fine. You're not wore out. Huh? No, I'm not wore out. We only had time to do one session before he had to go to dinner with the, with the rest of the people. What were we gonna say, Al? Um. Oh no, I was just gonna say um, I'm actually a little nervous tonight. Why? The boss man is watching tonight, remember? Oh, he always watches. He loves our show. Oh, he does? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, so we can we can we can keep it real, real, real. We can keep it real, real, real. All right, that's you what's up. You trying to you trying to get three nights or not? Nah? I'm trying to get five. <laughs> All right, let's get it started. Let's break down the show. Everybody's waiting for it, but thank you so much for uh, letting us know about your personal life, Q. We will be definitely mm -hmm. teasing you about that later on in the show. So right at the gate, we definitely have to pay our respects. We lost another uh, another uh, legend in hip hop, especially if you're a fan of old school hip hop and on the DJ scene, legendary entertainer Biz Markie has passed away at the age of 57 from long-term uh, diabetes complications. I know there was some, um, you know, some folks caught, thought it was last week and, and tweeted about it and it wasn't the case and he was hanging on and uh, he finally succumbed. So. Rest in paradise. Your contribution will not be forgotten. Such a 
fun entertainer. I feel like he was, a, I was talking off camera. I feel like he was the first rapper that kind of like came with that kind of comedy rap. Like he didn't take himself too seriously. He wasn't trying to be tough. And he was fun a fun rap. time. It was yeah. fun. Kind of, like, kind of like a heavy D. It was just fun. Party yeah. music. I call it party music. Yeah. I kind of, I'm, I'm it's pretty sad. And, and, and that song, Just a Friend. Remember that song, Just a Friend was number oh, one. Oh baby, you. Right. You got what I need, but you say he's just a friend, but you say he's just a friend. Oh, baby, you. So, you know, that made no, that made VH1's um, top 100 best hip hop song of all time. So big up to Biz Marquee. All right. He will definitely be missed. All right, guys. Uh, Jesse Smollett maintained his innocence. And so listen, he's still saying he's innocent. He entered a uh, courtroom on Wednesday in Chicago where he faces renewed charges over his alleged 2019 hate crime incident. He told Fox News that uh, he's innocent and referred to the court proceedings as a dog and pony show. Now, once again, a reminder, he was charged again with six counts of felony misconduct for allegedly lying to the police about a racist homophobic attack that he claims was perpetrated against him what are your thoughts on his ongoing case and then bringing it back and recharging him? What do y'all think about this? And do y'all think he's innocent? Because some people do. Mm. Let me get my drink. I already feel it. I feel it. I, I mean, listen, it was already proven that it was staged. It was already proven that he was hunching them Africans, whether one, both, or at the same damn time in the name of two chains, spit roast, baby, one in the front and one in the bite. And listen to all them big strong, whoa, whoa. all them big strong Africans scratching in his behind made his mind bad. Okay, it made his mind bad and his ass good. Nevertheless, you know, uh, ah! the only reason why I'm not tripping is because <laughs> white people take their ass in the court and lie all the time and maintain their innocence. And you know what? If his freaky threesome love affair went awry and they was role playing civil activists and they just <laughs> left the bedroom and became, you know, in the world. I mean, run with the lie. This role play supposed to be reality, honey. So just roll with the lie. But we all know Jussie ass is lying. And I, I, I honestly and truthfully wish he would just hurry up and put this thing to bed. So he'll get back in the bed with them Africans. Ow. <laughs> Al? You know, this is this is just this is just my opinion. OK, uh, the city of Chicago is still very mad with Jesse Smollett. And we know that Judge Tumlin and the new special prosecutor is not going to let this go away. Now, the good thing about this is we love Jesse Smollett. We love his family. They are talented actors and actress, and we support them. I feel like if he really wants to put this to rest, come out, tell us the truth, let us forgive you, and we will move on immediately. The route that you're taking, in my opinion, is just dragging us along and is staining your name, not for just a little while, but for long term. So from someone who has admired you from the beginning of your career to before this incident, I may suggest that you just try a different avenue because the longer you carry this on, the longer it's going to hurt your brand, in my opinion. What All if you really got to do is go to one of them bull dagger car parties that Lori Lightfoot be having. And, you know, just talk, Yo! to, her. <laughs> just talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Talk, talk to her while she... <laughs> and he'll be... <laughs> be all right, honey. No, but seriously, on a serious note, I, I really do believe that him holding on to his innocence, it, at the end of the day, whether you're innocent or not, in public opinion, you have been found guilty. That's this, why he got to go around that bull dagger house. <laughs> That's the why. views expressed by Funky Dineva are not the views of Fox, use Soul or Fox or all the Fox affiliates. I got to just say that real quick. Listen, all he got to do is buy Lori Lightfoot a suit that fit in a nice pair of pants. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And she will find a way to get him off. Yes, God. I'm telling because, you. because, Claudia, as you shared before, unfortunately, he was indicted for 16 counts of felony indictment. And the new prosecutor has brought six new, uh, new counts. 
So I just feel like, come on, bro. We First of all, we've got your back. We support you. All we ask that you do is let's put this to bed and let's move forward. Because remember, he has that incredible project that's coming out. He's, he's doing his, dictor- his uh, directorial uh, debut uh, about the um, two gay guys that met at the bar uh, on in uh, the Lower East Side. I can't remember the name of that um, debut that's coming out. But he has so much going on that's so positive and it can continue to impact and change the culture as it relates to the LBGTQ community. I just really feel like that he needs to get this thing off of him so that him and his family can move forward much more in the lane that they have always been, which is in excellence. Yes, <laughs> you're so serious. And I just cannot stop thinking about you talking about buy her suit that fits. <laughs> <laughs> but I love this family. I really do. I, I really feel like that entire family is talented. And Al, bless your heart for trying to save this segment. Bless your heart. <laughs> it's too late. He done sent Bulldog three times already. This segment is already trashed. It's done. <laughs> we got we gotta move on. But a, part of, a small part of me is like, what if he what if he is innocent and just went too far with giving the, the details with the he, I think he, the news it was a lot. A lot. I mean, yeah, because your first you inclination, after, your first inclination after going through something like that is to take that off of you, and you sat there with the noose on your neck until the police came. It's just real suspect. I hate that it happened, but like I said, all he got to do is bring some, some, some chips and dip around Lori Lightfoot House to one of her LGBTQ Langston Hughes James Baldwin parties, and she'll get at least <laughs> nine of them sixteen things. Reduce. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell myself, Claudia, go to the next story. Go to the okay. next story. Okay. Next story. <laughs> okay, look, another Karen strikes again, but this time in a Walmart. A black uh, man, Yashia Bryant, posted a video of a Hispanic woman named Liz who harassed him by following inside the Walmart while she was shopping. While he was shopping, because her son lost his phone. Let's take a look. Her son found the phone. Her, her kid son left the phone, phone in the car, the car all her along. Her son found it in the car. So now I'm going to press charges. May I, may I have your name, please? May I have your name, please, ma'am? No. Oh, now she don't want to talk. So as you can see, Liz, who wore a Kaiser Permanente shirt, uh, accused Yashir of having her son's phone. But then she discovered that her phone, uh, the, the, the son's phone was in the car. Kaiser Permanente is currently investigating the incident. Once again... Q, you brought up on Wednesday a Karen registry. Karen registry. This, I don't think this is her first time. They're so comfortable with just, you know, doing these things. We need a Karen registry. Here's how we know she's a Karen, right? Listen, it's human nature if you think somebody got your stuff to want to wanna confront them, so on and so forth. But she proved her Karenness when the son brought the phone and you refused to turn around and be like, oh, oh my God, sir. I'm so embarrassed. I am so sorry. I mean, like, just one of those. But no, you was wrong. And then you was going to double down in your wrongness because, shit, he's a black man. He's beneath you. Despite the fact that you was wrong, you still ain't going to apologize to him. Her ass needs to go on the Karen registry. You know, I want to applaud two people in this situation. And one, I want to applaud the young man that was a part of this because he kept his cool knowing that he was innocent at the whole time, even though she was completely ignorant and out of out of bounds. In my opinion, she attacked him at the car, pushed him all the way back into Walmart. And it wasn't until the son found the phone in the car and he came and told his mom that he found the, fo- the phone that she backed that she bagged down. Now, the other person that I want to congratulate the, into this is Kaiser Perm. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, they immediately after it was posted and tagged to them, they immediately looked her up, found that she was an employee and issued a statement. Thank you, social media. Thank you. Thank you, young man, for filming this. And thank you for keeping your cool and making her accountable. I can't wait to see the announcement on her job status in the next couple of days. We're about to take a commercial break. Before we go real quick, I'm just tired of, you know, we can put them on a registry. We can punish them. But 
even further back, it's their upbringing, the fact that white women, and a lot of times, I'm gonna say this, a lot of Latino people look down on black folks too. There's black Latinos that look, I'm not black. And I'm like, yes, the hell you are. And I don't just, I don't know why there's this consensus around a large part of the world that just has this negative perception or thought of blackness and darkness, India, Nigeria, all these countries that bleaching screams are like the top beauty selling product there. And it's just like, what is it that was put in your head as a child to think black is just so trifling when you guys are the actual trifling cave beasts uh, that, you know, are the ones out here wilding out, committing the most uh, atrocious crimes and holding everybody back. If you were so confident in your supremacy, you wouldn't have to do all these things because you would just rise to the top automatically. So anyways, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with more TGIF. Welcome back to TGIF. We are lit. Even though Q is a little subdued, the stuff he's saying is still can get you canceled on any other network but Foxo. But thank you, Foxo, for rocking with us and all our shenanigans. Okay, soulmates, we appreciate you tuning in. We see you in the chats. I see y'all. We see all your comments. Give us a thumbs up if you're loving the show. Let us know. Show us some love. We're going to read some comments later on the show. Uh, if you're enjoying our show and the Wednesday show, just let us know. All right, we got to pay some bills. All right, now. Uh, did you know that the average American has 97 points that they could add to their credit score but has no idea how to get them? Well, the data scientist at ScoreMaster cracked the code on how. Look, adding 97 points to your credit score is like found money. It means fast loan approvals, huge discounts, and low interest rates on everything from buying or refinancing a home to leasing a car to applying for a credit card. Now, how fast is ScoreMaster? One member raised his credit score 33 points in just five days and another one by 43 points in a couple of weeks. Y'all, ScoreMaster is so easy. It only takes about a minute to get started. And if you hurry, you get to try ScoreMaster for free because we got you. That's right. Try ScoreMaster for free and see how many points you could add to your credit score. Go to scoremaster.com slash T. That's scoremaster.com slash T. Again, scoremaster.com slash T. We'll be right back with more TGIF. You don't want to go away because we about to turn it all the way up. We'll be right back. No, we're going into the next story. Okay, right? listen, y'all be trying to set me up here. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a read, then it's not a story. Now we can just, okay, we're going to go into our story now. All right, so uh, Chrissy Teigen is back in the news. Um, we are going to uh, revisit that story. If you remember last week, we talked about Chrissy Teigen. And, uh, and all her shenanigans. Hold on, let's see. Ooh, okay. she looking like Hazel Lee right there, child. You know what? <laughs> hey, drywall uh, number three. That's drywall number three right there. Drywall Home Depot's finest palette, honey. <laughs> so she's, she's actually trending again after she took to Instagram to write about how she's been feeling since the cyberbullying scandal, since losing a lot of her deals last month. Like, She's really going through it. She said, uh, I feel lost and need to find my place again. I need to snap out of this. I desperately want to communicate with you guys instead of pretending everything is okay. If you or someone you know has been canceled, please let me know if there's a cancel club reunion because I could use some time off my couch. Listen, guys, I know we give her a hard time. Does she deserve a second chance? And um, who, who's responsible for making that decision? Like, do we let her back in? And I, I thought... I, I'm going to go first and then I'm going to let Q wrap this one up. Listen, what we're seeing right now is what's called crisis management. Um, and she's doing it at its finest. And I don't buy it at all. All right. I'm tired of seeing you show up to where your husband is with no makeup on, looking like you've been crying all day per crisis management. I'm tired of these open letters that you're putting on the Internet uh, per crisis management. I, I just don't feel like she should be allowed to say I'm sorry and move forward. You've got decades, young lady, of being rude, obnoxious, and inappropriate to people for no reason. I think you still need to be in timeout for a little while longer. That's my personal opinion, though. Yeah, what do you think? I mean, listen, time heals all wounds, right? At a certain point, whether it be a year, two years, three years, everybody will forget about it, and she will be able to slowly get back into the market and do whatever it is she needs to do. But in the meantime, in between time, as far as I'm concerned, you don't have no problems, baby. You are rich, okay? John Legend is rich. Girl, lay your ass down in your Egyptian thread count sheets. Go shopping. Go buy some stuff. Go on a yacht. You really have nothing to complain 
about, even though you lost your endorsements and you're dealing with a little bit of public embarrassment right now, your lifestyle is not going to skip a beat. Your mortgage is going to continue to be paid. Lock your rich ass in your rich house, eat you some bonbons, and cry in the ever lap of luxury and leave us the, the hell alone about this. <laughs> That's how I see it. You rich. You rich. You don't have no problems. You are rich. Claudia, what do you think? I don't agree because we've all been there. We've all been there. And people could say that about us. But it's all relative. There's someone right now that's making like 10 times less than us that can say, when, Al, I know when we first saw the show, you, you can't bring yourself to look at the comments because they bother you. Like, And I, I'm like that too sometimes, right? So it's, it's like, it's easy to say that and, and poke fun at her, but she's coming off the heels of losing a baby. She's always been rewarded for talking shit. And then all of a sudden it, it, it turned where it's not in anymore. And, and, and social media is a funny thing. Because people are so like, oh, bullying is wrong. And what she did is wrong. I'm not trying to defend it, okay? She she did what she did was wrong. But some of the comments that are directed to her about killing herself are just as bad, if not worse, than what she did. So my thing is this, how come when you're anonymous and you're in a group of a, a thousand or a million, it's not wrong when you do it. But when you're famous, people would say, oh, you got this, you got that. So, you know, you you are condemned. I, I don't know. I just feel like we're being a little hypocritical. No, I don't, I don't view it as being hypocritical. I just feel like... Like, I, I, I'm just from that old school that you just can't say I'm sorry after doing something for 15 years that you knew was just grainy as F-U-C-K. And then after you get spanked on your hand and lose a little bit of endorsement and stuff, you're going to turn around and say you sorry and you want everybody to forget all the shit that you did. That's not fair. I'm not. That's why I could never do reality TV, because if you mess with me on Tuesday, I'm not sitting with you at a bar on Thursday and saying, OK, we're going to move forward. It just doesn't happen like that. You can't pretend like you didn't do a decade of rude stuff to me and then expect me to put it to rest because you all of a sudden got puffy eyes and you're and you're crying because you got you got handled for it. I just that's just me. Maybe I need to pray about it. Maybe I need to I need to get some growth in me. But that's just where I stand on it. I, I don't feel like an I'm sorry can fix everything. Just like these Karens, you can't continue to use these methods that you know are wrong. You know they're wrong. And then at the end of the day, all you can say is, I'm sorry. And we're supposed to turn a page and pretend like those methods that you've used didn't kill somebody or didn't force somebody to be bodily harmed. It's not going to work for me. Well, you Chrissy, could, didn't, Chrissy didn't kill anybody. And she I hasn't just, it, she didn't I just, she didn't. You're missing the I, analogy. No, I'm not. She didn't, she didn't just say, I'm sorry. Well, you know what? Let's, let's get into it for real, Al. Because we've all, I know you. And I know people that you've forgiven that have done you filthy that I don't fuck, I don't mess with because of my feelings for you. And you're very, you show grace recently to someone that was awful to you. So my thing is this, it's easy to sit here on television or on social media. I don't even the business. I want to well, know. Well, no, I, I'll never put him on class. I, Al, I love Al. I will never say who it is, but I'm just saying this. Right. I, I got to kind of call a BS because you are, you've forgiven people right. that have been rotten. We're going to go there. So the difference here, Claudia, is as it relates to my relationship with that person, what I can do is. And I'm going to be real messy. They talking about Jennifer Williams. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they talking about Jennifer Williams from Basketball Wives. Go out. Bitch, I'm going to get the mess started today. Go uh, ahead. Stir it up. Stir it up. What I can tell you is, is, as it relates to me, right? I have had years of where she has uh, appeared and stood for me and I've appeared and stood for her. Now, mm -hmm. that relationship even though an Asar, Asari was given, I haven't, I'm not back in the same place I was with that person. And I don't know that I can ever be because it hasn't been proven to me that I can trust that person again, okay? So that's what I'm saying. I would have the exact same feelings with Christy because Christy, because it, it just appears to me that woman has just been so derogatory to so many people. And now that it has caught up with her, she feels like an I'm sorry. And one month in the bed is going to change all that she's been doing for 10 years. That's not mm -hmm. fair. We oh, don't want to talk say. about Chris. We want to talk about Jennifer. What's the tea? <laughs> you know, what what and, happened, and, Claudia? What she did? And, and my thing is this. Before the blinds are running with it, I'm not saying you shouldn't forgive her. I'm not. I'm saying well, she, if you... The, let me I'm saying, what she did. It, it, the, <laughs> that's up to Al if he wants to tell you. But the same way you have chosen to you know, move forward with that, 
I just feel like event, we got to do that with Chrissy event. Like, you know, it ain't like she just said sorry and she expects to be let back in. She lost millions of dollars potentially in deals and, and her reputation is destroyed. She's not a happy woman. I, and, and it ain't like I'm going to bat for her, but I know what it feels like to be canceled over things you said 10, 15 years ago that you no longer feel. Yes, you can make an argument and say she did it for a long time. And she did. I'm not even saying she's right. I'm saying she's dead ass wrong. But like, I feel like everyone else that isn't being the spotlight's not on them right now. It's so easy to say, oh, she's this and she's that. When we don't look at our own selves and go, well, you know what? I had someone that I fell out with and I forgave them. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you shouldn't forgive. Let me finish. Let me, Al, let me finish. Let me finish. Because when we talk over each other, it sounds horrible. When we, when we, when we do that in our own lives, but then we don't give that same grace to celebrities, we're being full of shit. We are. She like, needs to sit out for a while, though. She really needs to, does. She's yes. got to sit out for okay. a while. Because you don't get the, okay, yeah, you lost millions, but then you don't get to turn around, bitch, in 30 right. days and gain it all back. She right. needs to sit right. out for a while. She right. needs to feel the wrath of what she did. Because quite frankly, if she sits out for 30 days, loses her millions, but regains it again in 45 days, she didn't learn nothing. What it what it what it's teaching her is, oh, all I gotta do is cry like a rich white woman and smile, right. and I can get it all back. No, she needs right. to feel the burn. That's she right. Needs to feel the, the burn. Just like just like we don't give the Karens any room for their bull their bull crap, then we don't need to give her any room for her bull crap. Them crocodile tears are coming because now it has hit your pocketbook. Before it didn't matter. You were rude to whoever because you were who you were. And here's now the thing. you here's a thing. Need- you didn't change. Like, listen, y'all. At her age, people are fundamentally who they are. Okay, you didn't go through this on Monday, and by Friday, your ass is no longer a troll. No, (laughs) that spirit, that attitude, that meanness, that was down in your blood marrow, baby, your bone marrow. And it ain't going nowhere. You may learn to hide it. You may learn to suppress it. But the fact that it came out in the first place is evidentiary of the fact that that is who you are. are. I guess I just keep it. I have a way open mind because of say, people say that about us all the time. And you when we want to say, th- wait, wait, when we want to condemn people, we just got to be prepared that it can come back on us one day. I just, I'm just we, very, very, very fair. That's why, but you know what? It can. And that's why. We didn't say condemn. We said you just need to sit out part time for a little while. You got to take some accountability. Nobody said condemn. Yeah. Nobody said throw the chick you out. Need to sit Nobody out. said you need to be blackballed that. for a while. That's called. Yeah. Consequences and take and like chill out. That's so what would be consequences? And so, at the end of the day, at the very end of the day, she still ain't losing nothing because she's rich. But she we ain't don't. Okay, nothing. we gotta go to commercial. But we, 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 commercial. We, how about we go to commercial? We, we, we are gonna. Go. We are going to go to commercial, but I just want people to keep in mind. Yes, she messed up for 15 years, but she also just lost a baby. And, okay, and but don't conflate issues. That baby, I'm not conflating issues. I'm not conflating issues. That baby, I'm don't not, even bring that baby into this. That right. damn baby ain't got nothing no, to do with you. put the two in the same situation. Sorry. I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, don't tell me what to do, Al. I got this. I'm saying she just lost a baby and we sit there and say, what if that girl would have killed herself? What if she kills herself? I feel like we ain't gonna be happy till there's blood sometimes. And I just feel like I don't like what we do on the internet right now. I really don't. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with more of this argument when we come well, back. The internet TGIF. don't like what she do on the internet. Welcome back to TGIF for those that were tuning in. Just got heated, but listen, this is a debate and we're supposed to take positions on, on things and have these talks. It ain't about taking shit personally. It's about having and be feeling passionate about your positions and we all do. And, and guess what? It's fine. And then our views went up. So thank you very much. All right, y'all. A U.S. bank is suing Lamar Odom for owing back payments on a 2017 Chevrolet Suburban. The lender claims he hasn't made his monthly payments of $668.40 since February of 2020. They're also demanding a payment or surrender of the SUV, but Lamar has failed to do so. Should Lamar focus on his car note instead of trying to win Chloe back? What do y'all think about this? And Damn, I hate this that this story came out. I mean, listen, 
Lamar just being a nigga, okay? You know how you buy a car and the engine go out and you be like, I can't drive this mofo, so I ain't paying them hoes no more. That's <laughs> Obviously, Lamar Odom has $646 a month. Obviously, Lamar Odom has the $35,000 to pay for the truck. I wouldn't be surprised if that truck, let me tell you something, baby. I had bought a Sebring one time from the buy here, pay here people. Okay, I wouldn't have gave them people $2,000 of my good money. After about six months, the engine went out on me, and what it was going to cost me to get the car fixed was worth was more than what the car was worth. You know what I did? I stopped paying on that car, and I left that shit on the side of 285, okay? <laughs> I called them people, and I told them they could come get their car. I would. I, that's, that's what Lamont doing, just being an N-I-G-G-A. That car probably ain't running, and he like, why the hell am I going to make payments on something I cannot drive? And I'm not mad with it. When you got cash, who needs credit? Okay. Uh -uh. Isn't the car for his baby mama, Liz Morales? I think it's for her. Well, then her ass need to pay it then. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Al, what do you think? I'm going to tell you what I think. I think this story doesn't make any sense to me. I have no idea why we're covering it. The story that we should be covering is the message that he put on Chloe's uh, Instagram talking about whatever it was that she said in Tristan Thomas's comment to that. That's what I think we should be talking about. Now, if you really want to talk about what's going on in Lamar Odom's life, I want to talk about how two grown African-American men who are worth a quarter of a billion dollars are fighting over this white woman. That's what I want to talk about. Anybody in? Well, it's kind of an old story now, but we talked about it a couple times already on, on the station. But he said hottie and, and, and Tristan said, God brought you back once and you might not be this lucky this time. And we clown him for having no bass in his voice and trying to make threats to Lamar, who survived crack or whorehouse. they got Olympic medals and, and championship rings. You want to add to it? I don't know. You know, it seems to me that... It, I wouldn't mess with Tristan if you ask me. I mean, Tristan in his 14 seasons made $120 million, and that's much more than what Lamar made in his season as a basketball player. So as far as I'm concerned, and he's still playing. Well, they Tristan I'll, asked me to give him the money for the truck. For the okay. car. <laughs> <laughs> so your team, Tristan, like you think that Lamar should mess with Tristan? No, I'm not. I'm just listen. I'm just stirring the pot right now. But I, I, you know, Tristan is still in the league though, so obviously he's going to have a little bit more pull to me than Lamar. But Lamar Baby. is definitely on his own. Lamar is on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Okay, he has <laughs> arrived, baby. He's over there playing with Carly Red on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Okay, and we all. Mona Scott Young ass could pay for the damn truck. Okay, I'm sure he making at least. $3,500, $35,000 for the first season. Call no people. Call no people. Send that shit over to Mona Me Entertainment in care of Mona Scott Young and she'll get it squared away. <laughs> I just, you know, my whole thing is I, I, it took me out when Tristan commented on it. Like, aren't, isn't he, isn't he no longer with her as well? Well, Check he's not because he's free. He, Tristan is a everyone had Tristan Thompson out there and these little Instagram girls like he, they, he's you know what I'm saying isn't he no longer with Chloe yeah mm -hmm. All right. and yeah. Lamar is no longer with Chloe correct mm -hmm. yeah he was Carly why is he, Red why is he coming for Lamar if neither one of them have her because he wants to get back on reality television I think I think he misses oh, that attention okay. okay okay so he still thinks that there's hope that he's going to get back with her where he feels that Lamar has no hope of ever getting back I think he thinks he's better than Lamar because Lamar had the drug issue and he's the most recent and he had a kid with her. And, you know, listen, no one was checking for Tristan Thompson as a basketball player before he got with Chloe. What, did you even know about him? I didn't know about him. I didn't did y'all hear about him? him? So are, once are, you get, are you kidding me? He's done. He's 12 year veteran in the league now. We can't do that. He's I, mean, made I, don't, watch I don't watch basketball, so I'm not a fair person. We can't do is we can't discredit his. We can't discredit his time in the league. We he's not a household name until he got with Chloe. OK. Yeah. Is that well, fair to say? He's still been making $10 million for a long time. That's so right. I'm hoping now he's been a successful basketball player in the, in the National Football, I mean, in the National Basketball Association. So, But but there's a lot of these athletes that, you know, they get these reality stars because they like that extra, that next level fame, that mainstream fame, right? That's right. Because and they I don't think get he, it on the fade. They don't get it on the court. 
Mm-hmm. Which so, is no different than anybody else. These rappers are the same way. They want another rapper to kind of boost their mm-hmm. status. Everybody appears to me in the entertainment game wants somebody who is in the media instead of finding someone to truly love you and take care of you and, and give you everything you need. We got to give Lamar credit and props because he actually spoke out about that whole beef. And he said uh, they're fraternity brothers because they're both a part of the NBA and their feud could have really turned ugly. They're both black men in the right. NBA. So he actually took the high road when Tristan was over there kind of making yeah. threats to, to Lamar. Well, All right. Your damn fraternity brother, he need to help you with that $35,000. <laughs> so them credit people can stop calling Chris Jenner house talking about their truck. <laughs> you know they calling. Baby, them credit people got a hold of me one time. They called my step auntie house. My oh, step yeah. mama sister house. How y'all even got her number? Okay. Have, have, have y'all ever been um, a reference for somebody and then it went bad and they've been blowing up your phone? Because I did that for one of my friends and I hope he's watching right now. And he's just my friend. They still call me and I, I want to like kind of snitch on because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Y'all ever give your name? Y'all ever what, be your co- tell a story? What, what do you mean? I'm not understanding what you mean. Co sign for somebody as a reference. You co-sign as a reference? Not a co-sign, something? but as a reference. When they when they say oh, wow. we're, we're giving no, we're giving you this loan, but we need three references in case they can't get a hold of you. They call your references. Oh, I've so never, they, never done that before. I did that, so I didn't. I don't. I'm not like responsible for financially, but like if they can't find that person, they'll call you, and they call me oh, every God. single day, and I almost want to snitch because I'm sick of the shit. I'm sick of it. Y'all never had that? I have. No, but my creditors, did, my creditors did more calling. People, people probably were sick of me because it was my creditors doing most of the calling. Uh, <laughs> go to commercial. Girl. We're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be back with more TGIF. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back with more TGIF with myself, Al Reynolds, and Funky Dineva. All right, let's get into some more uh, sponsorship. Now streaming only on BT Plus, the hit original series, First Wives Club. Returning for a brand new season, Hazel, Ari, and Brie are back and bolder than ever. Joined by their sorority sisters, Jayla, the women are bossed up and ready to take on a whole new set of challenges while trying to balance having it all. Now, Hazel is the face of her new music label. Ari is making moves on the West Coast. Bree is going after a top hospital job. And Jayla tackles a difficult client at her law firm. But will ambition come at a price for this group of friends? This season is full of laughs, love, drama, and messy moments, picking up right where the acclaimed first season left off. From Tracy Oliver comes a second season of First Wives Club, starring Jill Scott, Michelle Batu, Ryan Michelle Bath, and Michelle McKenna. Now streaming right now on BT Plus, visit bt.com. I'm sorry, visit bt.plus for more. All right, guys, let's get back into some more stories. Uh, there was some drama with Safari and Erica Mena. It's never ending. Now, Safari is now seeking $50,000 for damaged property after claiming that Erica destroyed his expensive sneakers and motorbikes two days after filing divorce. Now, Safari claims that Erica damaged $30,000 worth of custom sneakers by pouring bleach all over them and cutting the laces. She also uh, reportedly poured paint on his motorcycles and into the exhaust pipes and gas tanks of all his vehicles. What are your thoughts on the continuous drama between these two? I mean, this situation is super toxic, right? Like, so, so, you know, Erica, that's petty. Cutting up clothes and bleaching clothes, that is so passe. That is so 1997. That is so Lisa Left Eye Lopez almost burnt down Andre Rising House, right? But from Erica's perspective, she probably has a reason to have these overwhelming, you know, out, uh, out display, outward display of emotions. The girl had that baby. The baby was in the NICU and Safari was Tootsie rolling around the United States in Jamaica, having a good old time, not there to be with. Listen, I don't give a good goddamn if y'all are not together, if y'all are not fighting for divorce. That is one half your seed. And, 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 and if that baby is in the NICU and Erica is in the hospital every day with that baby at a minimum, your ass could be sitting home all day or at the nearest day's end or at your grandma house or somewhere in the city just showing some type of spiritual support. Makes no sense. I agree. Al, what do you think? 
think they're both very brilliant uh, two talents. I think we keep talking about them every other week. They're on our talk topics. I think um, that they're earning their space and their place on Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Um, however, though, listen, ladies, the two of you, I, I, it's working right now because your show is back up and you want everybody to watch. But let me tell you, the two of you better stay together because once the two of you split, where are the two of you going to go? What are the two of you going to do? I just want you to be smart. Now, I see you. I see you. I'm enjoying the drama. I'm enjoying the engagement. I'm enjoying you staying a part of the trending and being at the top of talk topics. But you got to be a little bit careful. You, you, you're skating real thin on that line right there. But like I said, the two of them are intriguing to me. They're both very attractive. We, we follow them every week. I just want them to be careful. Be careful. Be do careful. You think, do you think the latest stunt is just for attention or do you think that's real him partying well i i don't think I, if it feels you do that for real show, it, yeah it, it feels if you would real. if you leave your if your kid is in the, the ICU, and i see you yeah and you're in jamaica with your friends winding with your boys if that's for a storyline then i won't watch them because yeah. that's horrible I, re, I think it's not i think that's real i think it's okay, real this is, the deal. this is the deal i'm not saying that it's not real but how do we know what she did to that stuff who did she tell and why did they well, tell the media well he's filing a lawsuit Okay, he filed a lawsuit. Okay, so like I said before, if you really are real and if you really have great counsel, you filed a lawsuit, uh, anonymous versus anonymous, means nobody can watch the dockets to see who's filing what against who. Come on, let's talk real, they real. Want, but they want it to play out in the court of public opinion because I I'm a woman, I'm a woman scorned. You know okay. what I'm saying? And as far as him partying while the baby was in NICU, she didn't have to tell that. She posted, I just had a baby, and three days later, he's in Jamaica. So we could just okay. deduce all that on all, our own. All I'm saying is you got to look at all the evidence that we're given to really know if you really are trying to keep this between the two of you behind closed doors, there's a ways to do that. I just feel I don't like think, I don't think she is. I don't think she I don't, is. I don't I think, think she cares. They're both immature as hell and they're both trying to one up and embarrass each other in TV. That is what they do. It's the only thing they know how to do. I think that's what you do when you're on reality TV and you got to stay relevant and you got to stay a talk topic. And I think what they all are forced to do when you do reality TV is to put your mess on front street when you should be putting it behind the house, in my personal opinion. So who um, do you think is more, do you think one is more at fault than the other one in this case, Al? When it comes to Safari and Erica? Listen, at the end of the day, if you weren't so public about what was going on, we wouldn't know. We know for a reason is all I'm saying. We know every single detail for a reason. This is not anything. And plus, there's a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure to be on reality TV these days. You have to constantly make up stuff to make people interested in you, engaged in you, and watching you, and following you. And I think these two are doing an amazing job at it. I hope the baby thing is not for, for attention. I mean, come on, they were supposed to be estranged and they got a baby. But they that happens to... all the time. So, I mean, that was nine months. It takes nine months that. for a baby to cook. I understand. I'm not, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm just saying, come on, y'all. We can't be completely oblivious to what could be something a little bit more than what we think it is. I hope you're right. I hope it's for attention and not real. I hope you wouldn't really leave your wife while your kid is in, in ICU and you're partying and whining with your boys. Just looks bad. The optics are very bad. But we're right, talking. We yeah. Okay. But yeah, someone in the chat said, uh, Nisa813 says they're both a mess. You know what? That's something we can all agree on tonight, I think. Yeah. Are we in agreement now? Yeah, we can yeah. agree with that. All right. Okay. So uh, a mother and daughter from Alabama recently revealed that they decided to watch each other's sex tapes to share tips on how to spice up their sex lives. The mother and daughter were featured on the new season of Smothered on Discovery Plus. I don't know if y'all seen that show. It looks at the dynamics of different mother-daughter relationships. Now the right. duo admitted to discussing different sexual positions they could try with their respective partners and the outfits that would please them. And they said their significant others have issues with their close relationships. How weird is this shit? Mother-daughter sex tapes looking at, I'm not looking at my mother's sex tape and letting her look at mine. What do you think about this? Is it cool to be this close to your relative, your mama, or is it cringe? It's, you know, it, 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 it's funny, right? Because upon first glance, 
I was like, this is very cringy, right? Mm-hmm. right. But it, because that's based on how we were raised, that there's a level of deference and respect. But I'm going to tell you something. Um, the two people on earth that you should be able to be the most open with and the most vulnerable with are your parents. And um, I think that if you dig deep enough, you may be able to find beauty in their closeness. I agree. That, that, that's that's an uh, interesting I, take I, on that. I, I, love, I love the fact that the mother said, no, right there, you need to arch your back a little more. And right there, you need to lift your leg up and put it over there on the side. Because that 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 old woman right there know how to please a man. Because she's been pleasing a man way longer than her daughter. She's 40. She's been pleasing a man. Okay, I better not say that. But let's just say she's been pleasing men for over 20 years. Her daughter has only been pleasing men for, at 20, let's say five years, six years, seven years. I don't think there's anything wrong with a woman who's been pleasing a man for 20 or 30 years to help her daughter out and teaching her how to please a man a little bit better. I'm disagreeing. I'm going to disagree tonight. I'm going to be the Al Reynolds of the show tonight. I'm the Al Reynolds tonight. Odd man out. I think it's disgusting. I would never let my mom see my sex tape. I, there's certain things I don't want to ever see my mother doing. Giving head, getting hit from the back, or riding some D is one of th- the three of them. <laughs> Y'all are crazy as, uh, as hell if you want to see your mother doing that. And Q, Q and Al, I know some of the stuff y'all be doing. I damn sure know for a fact you would not let your mama see your nastiness y'all been doing, especially you this weekend, Q, and last week, you, Al. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with our final stuff. More Hazel E. We got. We might have Hazel uh-uh, E. Girl, I can't. Let's not see. tonight. We'll be back after the break. No, AKA is to help her. <laughs> Welcome back to TGIF. Funky. After last week's epic uh, read of Hazel E., I was like, eh, we should probably never bring her up again. But Wednesday. Wednesdays, I'm sorry. She brought herself back into the mix by making some comments. She's not backing down. Now, your girl said she's still not letting up. She posted the following message in her Instagram story. Uh, might not have no Grammys, no Billboard Awards, none of the things Paola takes care of. But I do have my education and my letters. What y'all not going to do is insult my intelligence. Why do you think y'all she's you know refusing to let this thing go? She feels really strongly about this. Because she's embarrassed. Right. And listen, you might got your degree and you might got your letters, but they ain't serving you. And your degrees and your letters don't mean absolutely nothing when your ass won a Grammy. You were trying to be a damn rapper. Okay, a Grammy means more in music than the damn bachelor's degree and entry into a damn sorority. So again, she's showing her colors and she's revealing where her true insecure. Oh God, look at her. Jesus <laughs> Christ. But she's an AKA. Don't help this woman. No, no. I, 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 listen, I, I, Don't do what, I, I want to know her line sisters. I want to know where she pledged. I want to know if she pledged. Uh, uh, undergrad, if she paper, I need to know all this stuff. And, and, and you know, the gag is if you are a K, you have very poor representation now because the K's I know and the ones I came up with, they would never conduct themselves the way you do in public. Okay, there is a code. You know, they pride themselves on class, connections, education, all of that, right, Al? And, and good makeup. 100%. <laughs> Congratulations to Tracy Ellis Ross, Lisa Leslie, Robin Robin from uh, Good Morning America, all who made honorary Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated ladies honorary members this past week. Much and Kamala Harris is one, so yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything to contribute to that story, Al? Any uh, any comments on the? I really don't. No. no? Okay. No. Should we have her on the show one day? <laughs> And she'll come, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna call out that day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call out to be honest. Oh, I don't and, like and her. Walker. Alice Walker, as was also the renowned author, Alice Walker. Call a purple lady, she ain't dead. What Alice Walker has a dad? 
No, I don't think so. I mean, they, they just recently announced her as an honorary AKA, Ooh, correct? Exactly. Them lesbians live a long time. You know what? Before we wrap, I want to play a game of this or that. We're going to lighten this move. And we, I'm going to go on a high note. I'm going to give you guys two options, and you tell me which one you would choose over the other. Okay, y'all ready? Let's play. We went, through all, we went through all emotion on this show, but we need this. This is real. I'll take Alice Walker over Lori Lightfoot. <laughs> Go ahead. Claudia, if you don't hurry up, we're going to get canceled. I swear to God. Boys in the Hood or Menace to Society? Which one? Which one's Boys better? Boys in the Hood. Okay. Prince or Michael Jackson? Prince. Prince. Delta or... Sp oh, come on, y'all. Who put Delta or Spirit? That's... Delta. Come on. Come on. Some basic bitch. Some basic ass producer. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Um, top or bottom? <laughs> top. Somewhere in the middle. Twosome or threesome? Threesome. Twosome. Al, ain't you the one that goes to orgies? And swingers parties? No, I, I, go, to, I go to swinger parties. Oh, you classy base. Okay. A traditional re relationship or open? Open. A married man or a down low thug? A married man. Both. On that note, I'd like to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva, for joining me tonight. We laughed, we cried, we argued, we cussed each other out. But you know what? I hope y'all enjoy the show because we did. Huh? What'd you say? Keep your earpiece in. Oh my God, I cannot. Hey y'all, make sure you uh, remember to tune in on Wednesdays because we are on twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays right here on TGF. And uh, make sure you stick around for the Tammy Mack show that's coming up next. Y'all have a great weekend and we'll see y'all next Wednesday. Bye. Bye, Bye fellas. Yeah.